In my clinic on uh, making a complete uh, uh, layout, the wiring uh, section is fairly limited because the particular layout was only wired in one place, had one siding with uh, a, uh, a turnout uh, switch that uh, was not uh, remote. You operated it by hand. Um, this one is a little different. The track is going to be wired in uh, uh, several places because, as you can see, I have a double siding up here. I have another double siding over to the other side. I have a siding back in here, the main siding down here where the depot is going to be. Additionally, towards the end coming up this way and also in the back, um, I have uh, uh, two tracks that will eventually uh, join an additional module to the right of this module. And, uh, but uh, until that module is built, those areas can be used as sidings. Now, all the sidings need to be powered separately so that uh, I can stop a locomotive there, turn off the power, and then run another locomotive somewhere else. This is not a DCC layout. This is a, uh, a regular DC layout. And uh, whenever the power goes to uh, one locomotive, it goes to another, unless you cut the power on that section of track. All right, the first thing we need is a plan. So uh, I have this uh, track schematic that uh, uh, closely identifies the uh, way I have my track laid. I have uh, eight selector switches. Now the main line will be on selector one, uh, selectors uh, two through eight will be my sidings and I have them marked in here. This siding down here is, will be number two and uh, number three will be up here on the mesa. Uh, number four will be down here in the valley. Numbers five and six are going to be over here where the coal mine is going to be and I want each uh, uh, of those uh, spurs uh, powered separately. Uh, number seven is going to be in the back here. You, uh, in, in the back going towards the other uh, uh, module and number eight will be this one down here going to another module. Uh, I'm powering my track the main line here and here and here and here and over here. Now I'm over here because I'm between two uh, turnouts and I'm in here because I'm between a turnout and it takes it all the way up and around and back down again to this one and this one comes up and meets that one. So this turnout doesn't need uh, uh, an extra one. This one will carry it all the way up, all the way up to the turnout and the back side of the turnout is covered by this one. Uh, as for this turnout over here, this line takes it up to here and this line takes it to there. This line takes it up to this turnout, this line takes it up to that turnout, and it's powered here. So, uh, I have uh, power on either side of all of my turnouts. And uh, uh, when we get down to uh, actually uh, attaching the power sources, I'm going to show you why. Uh, Atlas's selector switch is set up for two cabs, up being cab one and down being cab two. Uh, I uh, am only using one, so I'm only going to be concerned with that. Uh, using the hardware supplied, I have uh, mounted the uh, two selector switches that I'm using, and I have uh, joined them together here with hardware that's supplied. Um, now I uh, am going to, uh, the, the way this works, is uh, the power is going to come in from a supply, come in here, come underneath and come out right here and attach here. You can attach the power here or here. It only needs to be in one place. The lower attachments are for the lower cab, but we won't worry about that. You do have to join it at the bottom though. Let me drill my hole. And I've always measured to make sure I don't run into anything below. Now 
now I can attach a wire here, run it through there, it'll come out here to attach to my power supply. Um, those of you who uh, have seen me use the uh, 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 barrier terminal uh, strips uh, know that I just stuck wires in and used it. But the way that this Atlas switch is set up, um, the best way to get a good join uh, with these little bitty short screws <laughs> that are in here is to uh, attach a, uh, a blade to the end of uh, each wire. And uh, I will uh, show you how to do that in just a, a moment. Uh, but again, the power is going to come in from here into here, and then all of the uh, lines will go through this hole right here. All of them are going to be fed in. And uh, the, so when you move one of these, the power comes in through here, out through there, uh, from the uh, 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 barrier uh, terminal strip. Uh, it will then go to the track. Then the locomotive will pick up the power and send it to the negative side, and that will come back underneath and attach to the power supply here, right here. It does not come back into the selector switch. The wiring for the selector switch is uh, much simpler. So the next thing to do is to attach the blade to the uh, uh, end of the wires we're going to use. Uh, but before I do that, I'm going to need to get a measurement to make sure that the wire I cut is going to reach where I'm going. All right, I'm going to attach uh, some spade terminals to the end of the wire. I've cut off a, a length that uh, is more than sufficient to reach from the uh, Atlas uh, selector switch uh, to the uh, uh, track power terminals uh, underneath the layout. Uh, the uh, terminals I'm going to use, I'm getting from this box uh, of assorted uh, terminals. Got it uh, Harbor Freight for about six bucks. There are different kinds that you can use. And this is the one that uh, I have selected. I've checked it to make sure that it uh, uh, fits between the barriers in my uh, selector switch. Um, it's got a little uh, shield on it here. I'm going to remove that shield. Uh, if I feel that I need a shield, I can always uh, put some uh, uh, liquid tape on later. But I'm going to cut that off. There we go. And. Remove that. I'm also going to crush it a little bit. Just hit it with this hammer a couple of times, to flatten it out. And then I'll strip the end of my wire. And bend it over double. Bend nice and tight. My little helping hands out here to hang on to this for me. I'm going to put flux down in here so we we'll suck the uh, uh, solder down in. this over it like that. Get some flux on the spade. Let's clean off my... Okay, I have my Salamonian, Salamoniac block. Get a nice clean end. 
try not to breathe the fumes of your sal ammoniac block, but it helps keep a nice uh, tip. And your tip will last a lot longer. Okay, I have the flux on. And apply the solder. Okay, now we have the solder on nice and good. Yes, we are successful. So uh, this is how I'm going to treat all the ends of the uh, wire that attach to my uh, uh, Atlas selector switch. And uh, uh, I will attach those and uh, then we'll uh, bring the wires through to the underside. Oh, one last thing. I'm going to use some tape. Since all the wires are going to look the same underneath, uh, I need to mark each wire to show which switch it went to. Uh, this is very important. I'm just going to put a little piece of uh, uh, masking tape on with the uh, switch number on. All right, I've uh, attached the uh, spades uh, to the end of my wires. Now uh, I've got the hole here so close that uh, I went ahead and uh, uh, took this loose while I worked on it to make sure that uh, uh, was able to make the bend, but you see how the spade just slips on. And tighten it and push it through the hole. Now this particular wire is the power in. And uh, we'll come back out here to go to the power source. Now I've uh, marked all of my uh, uh, wire leads so that I'll know which one is which. This one's marked number one and so it's going to go on the number one switch. Just loosen that a little more so I can get that in. And we'll feed that down. And I will continue putting them on. Here's the number two switch. And uh, I will get these all on, pass them through, and reattach this and go underneath. And we will uh, attach uh, the wires to the uh, uh, barrier terminal strip. All right, I've completed attaching the uh, blades across. Uh, these will be switch numbers one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and uh, I've already passed the power up through here. Uh, and again, it was necessary to uh, loosen the selector switch uh, to uh, uh, attach the blades because they're kind of stiff. And as you can see here, I had to bend this one. But uh, it all looks nice and neat now. And remember that each one of these is marked with a switch number it's attached to uh, so that I can keep track of them underneath. Uh, another way that you can keep track of them instead of passing them all through one hole is to drill a hole here, 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 one for each one. Uh, then you don't have to mark the uh, uh, wires the way I did because uh, uh, the position of the hole that, that is passed through will tell you which switch number it is. So let's uh, flip the um, layout over and uh, get underneath. Okay, remember the uh, uh, track schematic that uh, I showed uh, at the earlier part of this video. You remember there are seven uh, sidings and I planned on uh, uh, powering the track in five places. One, two, three, four, and five. So uh, I want all five mainline switches to be on switch number one and uh, uh, throwing the one switch will uh, turn all those power points out. Now the way we do that here is our barrier strip 
you can see the barriers in between each one. But because I want five lines going to switch number one, I'm going to need to uh, jump the barrier. That way, uh, when the switch uh, uh, number one is thrown, instead of just activating one, it will activate one, two, three, four, five lines. The five lines coming in here and uh, going to the switch here. So, to do that is rather simple. Uh, take a strip piece of wire and we'll cut off about, I don't know, an inch, three quarters of an inch. Bend it. Well, bend it in the middle, not like I did. Okay, and then we'll take it here and put it in like this. And tighten it down. Now I'll jump here to here, from here to here, and then from here to here and here to here, and that way all five will go in this. So I'm going to uh, make that jump and uh, be right back. Okay, I finished uh, jumping them all. So I'll take my lead number one. And that's the one that goes to the switch and I will, I'm gonna put it in right here. So, cut this. Strip it. Alright, now with all of these jumped, I can bring five wires into here and switch number one will activate all of them because the barrier is jumped right across here. The power, will, uh, the switch will connect here and this one will connect here and then connect here, connect here, connect here to those five uh, power uh, uh, points on the uh, track. So now it's just a matter of uh, getting all of my uh, uh, lines, cutting the ends off and putting them in so that they look nice. Try and keep everything nice and neat. Later on when you need to find them, that'll be a, a big help. So uh, I'm going to continue attaching those and I'll be right back with you. All right, I'm uh, ready to power my tracks. Um, remember the schematic. Uh, I've got a siding here to power. I'm also gonna power uh, on switch one here and here for through lines. Also remember that we're powering in between uh, all uh, uh, of the uh, uh, turnouts. Also, this section, this is, these are two turnouts uh, abutted against each other. I'm also going to have to power the positive here, not the negative because the negative line runs all the way without any brakes. So I'm going to need to power it here uh, just in case uh, my points uh, get dirty and can't carry, can't carry the power uh, into it. So uh, if I power here and I either jump it here or put it into the uh, uh, barrier terminal under uh, switch number one, uh, then this section will be powered down to the cut off here where we're going to cut it so that this section can be turned off independently and it'll also be powered up through here to where the cut is going to be so that this section can uh, have the power turned off. Again, remember, the outside of the circle is always red wire. The inside of the circle is always black wire. And uh, so let's uh, drill the holes. Uh, this is a brace along here and this is a brace along here. All this area is open. 
there's a wire that comes across here and heads into this area. So as long as I stay on this side of this brace and uh, this side of this brace, I'll be just fine. Uh, when you drill your holes, drill them in between ties. And I'm going to drill these right on top of one another, right up against the rail. So that we can turn them off, I'm going to uh, use my Dremel, uh, and uh, I use it on this little uh, cable so that I can get a perpendicular cut. Later I'm going to fill this cut uh, with uh, some uh, Eileen's Tacky Glue and uh, uh, when it dries and all the water is out of it, that will keep, uh, keep this from arcing. So I'll need to uh, fill that. Again, I don't need to cut the uh, uh, negative because if the positive is cut, then the power is cut. And uh, the fact that the negative line isn't cut doesn't mean anything. So now... Uh, we're going to turn this over and go under and start pushing wires up through the holes. I'm underneath uh, my layout now. You can see the holes. There's one set, there's another set, and there's another. I've uh, put a staple in up here, another staple in up here, and I've drilled a hole and we'll come across and I've got another staple here and that will lead me up around my di capacitor discharge unit to my uh, uh, barrier terminal strips. Uh, this is the positive over here and uh, as you can see these posts are jumped so I have five posts that are going to switch number one and run them down to here and this one is uh, the siding and it's going to go to switch number two but it's going to follow but it's going to follow the lines all the way around and up into here and that's the uh, the uh, black line will follow in and come into this side because uh, this is the negative side so uh, let's get ready to uh, measure our wire the wire you use the size wire the gauge wire depends upon uh, how far your powering points are from your power source. The farther away it is, the uh, uh, heavier gauge wire that you're going to need. Uh, my layout is uh, only 62 inches long, so nothing's going to be that far, so uh, 22 gauge wire will work just fine. Now, also, uh, when you're powering the tracks, you're going to want uh, a single strand wire. If you have a stranded wire, you uh, will need to uh, tin the ends before you can uh, attach them to your track. So it's better to go ahead and uh, uh, get the uh, uh, one strand wire to begin with. So I'm going to measure it. From my positive, all the way down here, out of the camera range. It's gonna go through there, gonna run along this, and go down here, and we'll 
add just a couple of more inches and cut it. Uh, now I'm going to uh, cut two more pieces, each one successively, about yay much longer, and then I'll have uh, uh, and uh, uh, black wires to match it, and then we'll start attaching. I have my wire uh, measured, and I have it playing along. Now you notice I'm not uh, stripping the wire yet. Uh, I just want it in here to hold it. Now, and of course the wire is fatter when it's not stripped. Okay, and here's this one. Remember I'm doubling up on this post because uh, I added an extra power spot. Uh, the rest of the power spots will be on single posts. Just putting these in here to hold it while I'm thre threading it. Okay. And also the stiff wire will stay where you put it. Just a little harder than I thought it would be. Okay. Here, through the staple. Probably should have put a staple in the middle instead of up here. Now, remember, one of these, each of these wires that I cut is successively longer. another staple further down and that'll keep everything nice and tight up against the board this uh, brace here and the shorter one goes to the near hole which is out of camera but you can we can just shove it up in there The outside hole. This is a red line, so it goes on the outside hole. And this one goes into an outside hole. Okay. Now, what we're going to do after we get all of our wires through is we're going to go to the other side, and I wanted plenty of slack so that uh, uh, I won't have any trouble in uh, uh, stripping it. Then we'll push the wire back down through here after we've soldered it to the railing and then we'll pull the wire back through here and then we'll cut this off to things like pass this underneath this wire which is where it should be. Uh, but uh, then we'll pull this across like that, cut them off in that way the wires will be exactly the right length uh, but we haven't uh, 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 made it too short to work with. So I'm going to put another red wire here and take it down uh, to the siding holes 
and I'm going to take a black wire and again I'm going to have two black wires on this post because I have uh, 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 an extra powering spot so there'll be two black wires on this post going through and uh, uh, in the uh, uh, opposite hole from the red wire uh, and then there'll be one here the uh, other red wire is going to be up here on switch number two remember this one is switch number one and all of these are switch number one so this is where the third red wire will go and uh, put it up there now because this one is going to the siding. The siding is switch number two. Well, that's, that's fun. <clears throat> uh, so I will work on getting all those wires back and I'll come back and uh, show them to you before we turn the uh, uh, layout over and start attaching our power uh, leads uh, to the track. All right, you can see the wires going through the holes here, coming up, passing, I passed them back underneath here, and up into the uh, barrier terminals. The one way up here is on switch number two. Everything down here is switch number one. But of course over here, they, uh, I also have two negatives in over here. Now the reason I've uh, left this little hump right here is because uh, I want to uh, attach, I've got a hole right here that's uh, going to power uh, the uh, uh, rails in between my two uh, turnouts and uh, I want to show you how, to how you splice that. And this uh, uh, goes to uh, uh, one of the through lines and uh, to splice this wire into it, so it'll go through this hole right here and that goes out in between the two turnouts and I'm going to splice it in right here. And the way I'm going to do that is to just put it in my strippers and bare a section of wire. The strippers cut into the wire. They always had before. Okay, you see where the wire is bared right there. So, we'll take this wire and wrap it around. Pinch it off. Now we can solder it and uh, put a little uh, liquid electrician's tape on it. And we'll be good. So I'll get that soldering done. And uh, when I rejoin you, uh, we'll be back on top. Uh, before we get to uh, soldering, I wanted to uh, go over one thing. Uh, when I showed you the cut in this uh, uh, section of the uh, siding, uh, I failed to mention that uh, you uh, need to, before you make the cut, you need to um, uh, secure the rail with uh, uh, some track nails if you can see that I have them on either side of the cut. Uh, if you uh, cut before you secure uh, the railings you're going to have trouble uh, with the uh, 
uh, alignment of the rails, uh, which uh, will uh, eventually lead to uh, uh, derailments. Uh, so now we're going to uh, uh, get to uh, the soldering of the uh, power points. Uh, just a couple of tips uh, on uh, soldering. Um, I have a variable solder here. I'm using it as its high, highest uh, setting using a, uh, a pointed tip. Uh, this particular set that I bought on Amazon for about $19 has several different kinds of tips. And the pointed one is the one you need. Uh, over here I have my Salomoniac block. Uh, you just take your tip and rub it in like that. Avoid breathing the fumes and it leaves you with a, uh, a very nice tin tip. Your tips will last much longer. Salomoni of Gak tip uh, block. Uh, I bought this uh, uh, big one for uh, $11 on uh, Amazon. You can also buy a smaller size. Uh, I'm uh, using a tin lead rosin core solder. Uh, get it Harbor Freight for what, $2? Uh, I use a paste flux. Uh, I like paste flux because I can see where it is. And, uh, I know where I put it and uh, it stays where I put it. And uh, of course uh, I have uh, a sponge nearby, a wet sponge for uh, cleaning my tip. But uh, the sal salamoniac block uh, is uh, what I use in between each one. Uh, the thing I like about this particular uh, uh, soldering uh, iron is that it heats up really fast. After I solder something, I unplug it. Uh, then when I get around to kneading it again, I plug it back in and while I'm applying the flux, it heats uh, fast enough to be ready to go. If you will notice, uh, I have weathered my track to make it look uh, rusty and I've also weathered the tile, uh, the uh, ties uh, to give a, a, a better looking layout. But if you're going to solder to this railing, you need to scrape the paint off to get a good solder. So I'll just use this pick. Harbor Freight, I got a whole set of them for two bucks. So once I get that off, we'll cut back our wire here. Now as you notice, there's, there's play in it. Now I don't want to try and do anything way down here. I'll do it up a little higher. And then I'll push it back in because we have plenty of room to take out the slack when we get down there. Strip the wire just a little bit. End it over. Because this has the one strand in it, it holds bends fairly well, and that will help you in keeping it up against the rail. Like that. Oops. tight against the rail. I'll apply my flux. Let's see.
and we have ourselves a nice solid starter that's all there is to it uh, it'd be rather boring for you to sit and watch uh, everything else I'm going to uh, do the same thing for all of these wires and remember I have one back over here uh, that uh, uh, is in between the two turnouts and uh, as soon as uh, I get those uh, soldered I'm going to uh, turn the layout over and we'll uh, tighten up the wiring uh, underneath all right you see there's a lot of slack in the wires here and I guess it would probably be all right but I want to neaten it up a little and uh, just go ahead and pull these up here move them along here remember this is the wire that goes in between the two uh, 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 turnouts that are uh, abutted against each other and pull them through up here Black wires need it. All right, now we'll go ahead and take these out. It looks like we're good. So now it's a matter of uh, uh, drilling the holes uh, for our other power points, passing the, measuring the wire, passing it through just like we did uh, uh, for the uh, uh, first four uh, power points, and uh, I will continue to power everywhere uh, according to. Uh, uh, the uh, plan that I laid out. I have finished uh, uh, running the wires up through the free drilled holes to power my sidings, uh, but I thought before I started uh, uh, soldering them to the track I would go over one more time the uh, idea that uh, you don't allow points 
to transfer power to a track. You always want the track to be powered with a soldered wire that leads to the power supply. Running right through here is the main line and the outside oval and it is powered on both sides uh, back by the bridge and it is also powered uh, further up the line. Uh, it's one of the first ones I showed you. But uh, right here uh, in this uh, turnout where we're going into the sidings where my coal mine is going to be we get the uh, uh, we have the problem of, in this particular instance, uh, to get power to this one right here, the switch needs to be thrown and then the point over here picks up the power. Well, I don't care for that, so I have drilled a hole here and I'm going to solder this in. And this particular one, instead of taking it all the way to the uh, power source, needs only to be jumped to this line over here because it is the main line in power. So I'm just going to solder it, uh, just to splice it in with this line right here. That way this piece of wire uh, will power, will get power from the main line to this part. Okay, now this track is powered now and it's powered all the way to the end. The, uh, on, posit on the positive side, on the negative side, this side is powered all the way. But what about in between? Well, the points are supposed to transfer power for that, the points in this turnout right here, but uh, I don't want that, so I drilled a hole here and a hole here, and I brought up uh, uh, a red wire that will be soldered here and a, a black wire that will be soldered here, and those will both be taken over here and spliced into the main line. That way they get their power from the power source and not from the points. And then, of course, beyond the cut, the cuts are here and here, we're powered by uh, 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 these uh, uh, wires right here, which do go to the power source. Okay, so uh, now I'm going to uh, finish uh, my soldering, uh, and then as soon as I've done that, we'll go to the underside and look and see what I've done. I thought you might like to see some of the splicing uh, done, where it was and why. Uh, as you can see on the right there, those are the two sets of lines that uh, separately power the uh, 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 two turnouts over by my coal mine that I was just showing you. And then over towards the left, you can see the two wires that come up in between uh, the turnout, uh, one positive and one negative. And if you follow them over, I run them up the side. And as they come up here, I have uh, spliced them to the uh, 1A uh, main uh, uh, track power line, the one that's uh, right in the middle up front. I've just gone ahead and spliced them into it. That way, the uh, uh, turnout there will be powered uh, at all times uh, when the main line is on. Uh, and also into that line, you'll notice, you see the red uh, circle there, there's another uh, short line coming out, and that's the uh, in between the uh, turnout that uh, uh, separates the main line uh, from the coal mine. Um, uh, uh, siding. So that's uh, the way it's done wherever you need it done and uh, it's the splicing is done just the way uh, I showed you uh, earlier when uh, um, I showed you the splice that went between the uh, two turnouts that were butted together in the uh, front middle of the layout. Uh, now I'll get back to my soldering. Well, a couple of changes in my plans I want to bring to your attention. First off, the power pack that I was going to use that took up this whole area here, uh, turns out that the uh, AC supply is not AC, it's DC. I don't know why, but uh, at uh, 
uh, 16 uh, volts, it's uh, too much for the Pico stuff. Uh, DC can only be 12 volts, uh, so I have another uh, power uh, source, and uh, that's this Athern. It has uh, 16 volts uh, AC coming out with a variable DC here. As you see, I attach these uh, um, alligator clips to it, and it will sit here. But uh, instead of clipping it onto the wires up here, uh, I've decided to go ahead and take these uh, copper uh, plated uh, stainless steel screws and I'll drill those in. I'm also going to uh, um, solder a little piece of copper uh, wire to the top of it and then I can clip these onto it. And the wires I will pass back underneath and I will solder them to the bottom of the screws. Uh, that'll look neater than having these uh, bunch of wires uh, laying around on top. The other change is over here you can see I've instead of numbering my switches 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 I have uh, labeled them A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. Uh, this is to separate them from the uh, turnout uh, switch motors uh, and the switches here are 1 to 10. Down here they're A, B, C, D and A, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 will be the uh, uh, main track. Uh, B will be the uh, uh, main siding uh, that we did first and uh, so on. And uh, this will also make uh, uh, the attaching of the uh, schematics and labeling uh, of the uh, uh, wiring uh, a lot, uh, uh, a lot uh, clearer. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, get this installed and uh, then we will uh, uh, check on the, the uh, rest of the wiring. I have uh, changed the uh, uh, wiring going to my uh, power source. As you can remember, they were passed through holes down here. Well, I've taken them up through a hole up here and have uh, soldered them to uh, the bottom part of the uh, copper-plated uh, uh, screws. Well, my wiring is complete now. Uh, as you can see uh, on the left there, um, each of the posts has been labeled. Uh, this particular uh, barrier uh, terminal strip uh, comes with a cover. If you don't have a cover, you need to figure another way to uh, label your posts, perhaps uh, writing uh, on the uh, uh, sub-base. Um, uh, you also notice that uh, I have uh, uh, to the right of the uh, uh, track power uh, is the uh, power for the uh, turnout motors that's covered in uh, part one of wiring uh, your layout. All of the uh, turnouts are marked uh, one, to, 1 through 10 with a circle around them in black. All of the power points are marked in red with a square box around them. And uh, anywhere or spliced a, a, an auxiliary line into it, uh, it's marked the same. Also, as you can see over here, I have pinned up to the board uh, uh, on the top is the track power with all of the uh, uh, points marked. And uh, below that uh, is uh, another uh, schematic for the uh, uh, turnout motors. Uh, you will also need to have something like this uh, on your layout, and, unless, of course, you want to memorize where everything is. I'm pretty sure I know where everything is because I've spent so many hours putting them in. But uh, there will be labeling that will need to be done uh, on your uh, 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 Atlas uh, selector switches. And... Uh, uh, labeling also uh, for your uh, uh, turnout motors, but uh, uh, this uh, uh, this completes the wiring underneath. All that's left to do is test the track. All right, I've connected uh, my power source, and you can see how uh, nice and neat that lays. Uh, now uh, I'm going to take my tester and test my track.
If you don't have one of these, get one. Uh, this one costs uh, $6 at uh, Harbor Freight, but uh, they also have coupons where you get them free with any purchase. I must have 12 of these by now. I'll turn it on and set it for DC. I have all of my track switches on, so power should be going everywhere. I'll set my uh, power pack at uh, 50. That's just a little over 7 volts. And here's my siding, and I'll test it there with the red on the outside. And my uh, meter is reading 7.49. I move it in here to uh, uh, track A1, power support A1, 7.49. Move it in here, 7, 7.49. All right, now I'm going to turn off the power over here. That's B. I'll turn that off. And I'm getting a reading of zero. Turn it back on. And there we get our 7.49. Now let's test over here. Remember I explained that, that this negative power goes all the way through both of these, but the positive power stops here and then comes up from here. If this is turned off, there's no power coming through this track over here. That's why I put in uh, this auxiliary uh, line right here so that uh, when the uh, points are set this way, I push this down and I get 7.49. If I change the position of the uh, points, I still get 7.49. So it doesn't matter which way the points are going, I'm going to get the power because the power is not being transferred by the points. It's being given by, uh, uh, it's actually hooked to a uh, uh, power, uh, uh, going directly to the uh, power source. Now I will continue to uh, check all of my areas to make sure that uh, uh, I have power everywhere when they're all on, that the power goes off when I turn a switch off. And uh, then I will be ready to uh, run my locomotives. Uh, I hope that this uh, uh, tutorial has been helpful to you. Uh, if you have questions, uh, please uh, uh, send me a note by uh, uh, posting something uh, uh, on YouTube and it will get to me and I will answer your questions. Uh, also, don't forget if you want to see the uh, wiring uh, for these uh, uh, Pico uh, momentary contact switches and uh, the Pico uh, PL10 um, uh, switch motor, please see part one of wiring your layout. It's been uh, a lot of fun showing you this. Good luck to you.